Hello friends, welcome to Summer Storytelling. I'm Sherry Rita from Wilmette Public Library and I'm here to share with you some of my favorite stories from all the reading I've been doing this summer. I have a story for you today that might just be true. We don't know for sure. It's a very old story. It comes from around the year 1100, a long time ago in England. That's a thousand years ago. And it comes from Nottingham, England. But the king there in Nottingham, King Henry II, had gone away to war. And he had left his greedy, lazy brother behind as the ruler. This brother didn't want to be bothered with ruling a kingdom, so he hired the sheriff of Nottingham to collect the taxes and to keep order. And the sheriff was not just lazy and greedy, he was also evil and mean. He didn't just collect the taxes. He grabbed everything he could get his hands on and left the people to starve if they had to. Now, luckily, Nottingham had a forest called Sherwood Forest nearby. It was the King's Forest. But Sherwood Forest he had a man named Robin Hood and his merry band of forest dwellers. And Robin Hood and his merry band made it their job to make sure that everybody was fed and taken care of. They were very clever and they were very careful. They only hunted stags so that they wouldn't hurt the deer population. And they always wore camouflage green so they wouldn't get caught. And they used their wonderful aim and their strong bows to shoot down deer with one shot and distribute the meat and the hides to people who were starving and poor. They came to be known as sort of the guardians of Sherwood Forest. So if a traveler was coming through Sherwood Forest and they were poor and hungry, Robin Hood and his merry band of forest dwellers would invite that person to dinner. And then they would give that person what they needed in order to survive the trip. If somebody who was rich and kind came through the forest, Robin and his merry band would invite them to dinner too. And then they would explain about how many people were poor and hungry and they would ask for a donation. And if they came upon someone in the forest who was rich and greedy and rude, well, they'd invite that person to dinner and then they'd take what that person had. Sometimes they would even take his clothes and make him leave the forest naked and they'd give what they could to the people who were hungry and starving. Who was this man who took justice into his own hands? Oh, he drove the sheriff of Nottingham crazy. But the sheriff couldn't catch him because the men were careful and clever and because the people loved them. Nobody would ever turn Robin Hood in. The sheriff stewed about that for a while. And then he came up with a plan to catch Robin Hood. I know, he said, I'll have an archery contest and the winner will be given a golden arrow. Robin Hood won't be able to resist that. Well, he was kind of right about one thing. Robin Hood couldn't resist a contest like that. Everybody knew he was the best archer in the land. But Robin Hood was careful and clever. So he and his merry band made a plan. They took off their green camouflage and put on clothes of all different bright colors. And then Robin Hood and two of his men went to the contest, but they all went by separate routes. So instead of a band showing up, it looked like individual people had just shown up to the contest. They entered the contest, and they were doing pretty well. Pretty soon, only those three, a big, a big man 
who was John Little, and a very young man who was Will Scarlet, and a slender man in red rags, a man who was wearing an eye patch over one eye. And you know what else? He was a man who had dyed his beard brown so he wouldn't look like Robin Hood. Those three and the sheriff's archer were the only ones left. And they shot another few rounds. And eventually, only Robin Hood and the sheriff's archer were the only two left. Will Scarlet cried out jokingly, Hey, that guy's pretty good! He might be better than Robin Hood! Robin Hood winked at his friends. And then they made ready for the last round. After you, said Robin Hood. And the sheriff's archer pulled his bow. He let go. And oh no, he hit the target just about dead center. The crowd gasped. Robin Hood smiled. Took a breath. Pulled his bow released it, and you know, he split that arrow right down the middle with his own. The crowd went wild. And of course, the sheriff was forced to give this man in red rags the prize. Who are you? He said, what is your name? Do you want to come work for me? And Robin Hood said, I follow no man. I have no master. That ticked off the sheriff, but Robin Hood and his men just bowed to the crowd who were still clapping and surrounding him. And then they rode off to the forest. And they hunted a wild boar and they had a big barbecue feast. And Robin Hood said, oh, we just need to do one more thing to make our victory complete. And so while still in their disguises, they rode back to Nottingham. And Robin Hood wrote a note. And he stuck it on an arrow. And then he shot that arrow through the castle window to where the sheriff of Nottingham was having his dinner. And the arrow stuck itself right inside a roast goose. The sheriff pulled it out. And he read the note. And the note told him it was Robin Hood who had won. Get him, said the sheriff. And he blew his horn and his men, his, his soldiers gathered together and they chased Robin Hood all the way back to the forest. But Robin Hood and his merry band were way too quick and they knew the land way too well. And they got back into the forest safe and sound. And from that day forward, they continued to steal from the rich and give to the poor. There are lots and lots of stories about Robin Hood. You can check them out at the library or on Gutenberg.com. Um, you can find them all kinds of places, maybe even in your own library at home. I hope you enjoyed that last story. I loved telling you stories this summer. I look forward to sharing many more story times with you. Take care.